Welcome back to another episode. Today's topic is learning machines. Uh, now, I'm an engineer, so I love how systems work. I love uh, looking at the details of how something comes together, uh, individual and individual basic building blocks, and comes together to form a more complex, complete structure. And systems are no different. They work the same way. So we're talking about learning machines today because that's actually what we all are. We like to think, or as an engineer, we would like to think that we can build learning machines and that's where artificial intelligence is going. But if you look at the first learning machines, that's what we actually are. That's what the human race actually is. We have the ability to learn information and actually put it into action. So in breaking the two pieces apart, we have learning. What is learning really? Well, from a engineer point of view, learning is simply programming. Uh, the ability to insert a new program. So the way that computers work uh, and the way they can do so many things is that you can insert various programs into them and they can run those programs and automate those processes. Uh, and that's what we do as human beings. We actually learn information from our environments. We learn from what we see, from what we read, from what we hear. Uh, we bring all of that into our consciousness and then we essentially form an understanding of the world based on that. But that's not the only way we take information and we also have an imagination. And what that Im imagination does is the same thing. We can, in the back of our minds, think about a certain type of problem. And that's really what our mind is actually really good at. It's good at solving problems, especially the ones that we sort of take it in and we're not really sure, okay, well, what do we do next? Our mind essentially takes all the information in from around us, takes in everything that we know and starts coming up with ideas that essentially it's pitching uh, to our consciousness. And then that's something that we all of a sudden have a magical idea about like, oh, I know how to do that now, right? So that's what learning is. The machine part is really what our bodies are. Our machines um, are our connection to the real world and that's what we can actually um, do with them. So if there's information that you take in uh, for your mind, that's what your body allows you to do. If there's something that you actually put into the world, that's what you do with your words, which I'm doing with you right now, uh, with your actions, um, with your abilities, anything that you put into the world, that's that's your interface. So your body represents your interface. So that is your machine. So you gotta take good care of your machine if you actually want it to work. But the machine by itself isn't enough. You need to take the mind, which represents that learning component, and you need to take the machine, which is your body, and the two need to work together. Now. Uh, if you just learn, which means if your mind is just just firing, right, uh, but you don't actually apply what you're learning, that means your body's not really doing anything. And in that case, you're a broken machine. So what do most folks normally do with broken machines? They throw them out, right? Because it's great if the machine can think, but it's not actually putting out any action or giving you what you need. It's not fulfilling a purpose, right? So. That's what happens when you're learning, but you're not applying. Now, on the other side, let's say that you don't learn. You just keep doing what you're doing. You're, you're in a routine, and that's all that you do, and just apply. So you don't learn anything. You don't take any new programs, and you just learn. You just apply. Believe it or not, you're actually a slave. And in that case, you're acting, but you're not thinking. And that's exactly what slaves do, whether they don't have access to the information that could allow them to have new programming or if they choose just not to do it. Right. So you can't really do one without the other. You have to be learning and you have to be a machine. And you got to combine the two. So you have to take everything that you're taking in as knowledge and you actually need to be able to apply it in the real world. And you can't do one or the other. You have to do both. So unless you can do both, your potential is always going to be limited. If you can think but not act, your potential is limited because maybe you come up with some great ideas, but you can't bring them into the world which really, really sucks, right? And if you can do things, but you're not learning anything new, all of a sudden you're gonna become old and archaic and, and your methods just aren't gonna work anymore because you're not willing to change, right? So you need to have both. Now, when you have both, that's where your potential is limitless. That's where there's no stopping you. Because if you have the ability to learn and put it into action, there's nothing that can stop you because you can adapt to any environment. That's why learning is so important. It allows you to actually adapt and this world's constantly changing. So that's why learning's super, super important. So I wanted to share uh, my story with uh, escaping the monopoly. So you may have heard on a few other segments of me talking about the escape the monopoly. This is a movement that I've actually put together based on my challenges 
in life and I just equate them as a game so it's easier to kind of explain of what happens in the Monopoly. So I've been traveling the Monopoly board all my life, but the Monopoly board changed when all of a sudden Go disappeared. And for me, if you've heard my other segments, that's when my whole idea of working for other people and the job disappeared. So as soon as that Go disappeared, what are you doing on the Monopoly board? It's like, how are you able to function if there's no Go? If you're not able to go, if you're not able to pass Go and collect $200 or get a salary, how does your world actually change? Um, and that, that was something very, very difficult to fathom because I'm just thinking of all the possibilities. Like, well, sh it should be the same thing when people run out of money. If you can't pass go and collect $200, you're just going to run out of money, right? Or that's the thought, right? Because that's usually how the game is thought of and how it's played. It's like once you can't pass go anymore or once you're not collecting a stream of income anymore, it's, it's downhill from there. But believe it or not, it changed my perspective. And, and that's something that's incredibly powerful. Uh, I realized, I've been going on four years now. So my liberation day, that's when I call it, was July 26, 2016. And I'm about, maybe about a month and a half um, for, for my fourth anniversary of that. And I learned some things, right? So, and going around Monopoly board, and again, doing this for four years, I got to see how the system worked. I got to appreciate how the system worked. And it wasn't something that I got upset about. It was something that I needed to learn about because, again, it was a new challenge for me. No go anymore. So how do you play Monopoly without a go? Well, you have to learn some other lessons. You have to learn what makes the system work because all of the ideas that you may have heard in the past from your parents as far as it takes money to make money and all these different things, it means different things to different people, but it's based on how you actually play the game. And what I learned are a few things that would blow your mind. Uh, the first thing I learned is even though I thought money was my problem, it wasn't my solution, right? So money wasn't the answer. And when I wanted to escape the monopoly, money was not the answer. Now, most folks would think money would be the answer, but in my case, it wasn't. That was not going to be the answer. So I thought that was kind of profound, right? You think about the whole point of Monopoly is to make money and to win the game. But that's not necessarily how the game's played. And it, it took me a little while to understand that. But as I kept getting past one challenge and another challenge and another challenge, I realized that financial intelligence was more important than money. And so that's what I kept working after. I had to learn about financial intelligence and I had to apply that. And once I did, then all of a sudden money became less of a factor. Like profound, right? Uh, the other thing was, was knowledge. So if anyone knows me, um, I'm very detail oriented. I want to know how things work and I'm willing to put the work in to figure that out. And as I started dealing with challenges, my th first thought was, okay, well, if money's not the answer, maybe I don't know enough. Maybe there's more information I need to find out. And I became, I became an education junkie, right? I kept learning and learning and learning, and there was so much out there. The more I learned, the more that I realized I didn't know, and I just I didn't have enough time to apply it, right? So I'm taking all this information, and I was like, didn't know that, didn't know that, didn't know that, didn't know that, and then I got stuck. And I have all, my, my, my closet is full of all these various training programs where I went, I tried to take something new, tried to sort of put that into place and figure out how that actually worked. And I was going overboard. Like there was not enough time in the day for me to try to soak up and learn all this information. So, so for me, knowledge wasn't the answer either. I could get more and more information, but it just, it just wasn't as impactful. I couldn't use it no matter how quickly I tried to absorb it. I could not put it out in the world fast enough. So maybe I was going you know, overboard in that category, but I realized that being an education junkie, I mean, that, that's addiction, right? I was addicted to learning, and that was actually created a problem for me. So you know, taking a few steps back, I realized, hey, money's not the issue, or money's not going to solve my problem. Knowledge isn't going to solve my problem either. All right, well, let me just make sure that I'm I'm keep doing everything that I possibly can. So I was super productive. I had a task list that, that there are 20 or 30 things to do in a day. 
And that was overwhelming, right? So I'm getting overwhelmed from three areas. I'm getting overwhelmed because I'm looking at bills coming in. I was like, oh, man, how are these things going to get paid? I'm looking at knowledge, and I'm just like, oh, how am I going to get more information? And I'm looking at productivity, and I'm just like, I got to keep doing and doing and doing and doing and doing, right? So, like, there are these, these three angles, and I'm just looking like, how is this possible? And overwhelm just it hits you like a ton of bricks, right? And then... I got clarity. So with all of that, I had a lot of confusion, but then I got clarity. And what the clarity actually showed me is that money, knowledge, and productivity were great, but they form a triangle around something bigger. And the something bigger was perspective. And once I started harnessing perspective, everything changed. The perspective was the piece that, it was a missing piece. It was, I was playing Monopoly, but I was playing by somebody else's rules. And I was telling, playing by the rules that they told me, or that I learned from my parents, or that I learned from my generation and experiences and everything growing up. But that's not actually how Monopoly actually really works. There, there's a lot more going on that you don't see. So once I changed my perspective and I stopped thinking about, why am I doing what even the the, the gurus are telling me or what everyone out there is telling you, why don't I just look at the behavior of how folks actually act? Uh, what are they actually doing in this world and how is that changing? And then all of a sudden, I started getting clarity. I started getting clarity and understanding that I was not playing the same game that some of my teachers were playing, right? Some of my teachers were in the game of providing education and I was in the game of learning as much as I possibly could. But that wasn't the same game. It was a different game. So when they're, you know, making their, their fortunes, they're doing it off of education. <laughs> they're not doing it based on everything that they're teaching. So that was a huge perspective. I stopped looking at all the information that was given to me. And I started looking at the behavior. And when I started looking at behavior, my perspective changed. And when my perspective changed, I found that I was learning more faster because it was all coming in just based on, on seeing what was around me. I stopped tuning into the information. It's like I tuned to a different channel on the radio. Instead of you know tuning into, hey, you know, you have to you know go to work at this time, you have to be back at this time, that have a button on the seat. I all passed all that and went to a different station and got to the whole idea of don't work for money, work to learn. And then like phew, that that was a powerful thing. And then like behavior tells more truth than what someone's words actually will. So don't look at what they're saying or listen to what they're saying. Look at what they're doing because that's going to tell you the full story right there. So uh, being able for me to escape the monopoly was a change in perspective. And that's actually something that I learned so much about and I was able to, I almost feel, perform miracles as a result of it, that that's what I'm actually trying to teach you. So, uh, Hope you enjoyed today's topic on learning machines. If you want to find out a little bit more about the story, how everything is actually coming together, check out escapethemonopoly.com. Hope you enjoyed this segment and look forward to catching you on the next one. Bye.